I'm Shay O'Connor, and this is my story. Okay, so tell the world, like, where are you from? I am from Uptown New Orleans. Um, I want to say that I grew up in a lot of different areas because when I was in elementary, I actually lived downtown in the 8th Ward, but for the most part, my family is from Uptown, the 17th Ward. Gotcha. So growing up Uptown, like, I mean, how was it for you? It was a lot. Um, you know, I stayed on Belfast, Belfast and Joliet in Holly Grove. And um, I remember, I remember my childhood being filled with like a lot of fun people. Um, I met a lot of people who helped to shape who I am today when I was staying in the 17th Ward. Gotcha. And it's helped me when it comes to my stories because I feel like living where I lived, I never judged anybody. And I met a lot of different people from a lot of different walks of life. And so I've been able to use that when it comes to what I do in life. So I would say that that's the most poignant area that I've ever lived because I met so many different people and um, I still think about them often, even though a lot of them um, ended up in different, um, yeah, a lot of them, their lives ended up differently from how I became and where my life took me. Gotcha. So I'm like, what's your craziest story growing up? Ooh, there are so many. Um, so when you say that. Like, you know, just, it's just like one memory, like I always remember that. Okay, something that stands out to me is the fact that my dad was on drugs my whole childhood. Um, so, growing up with a father that was on drugs, um, it was definitely difficult for me and my siblings because I have four older siblings. Um, my mom and my dad had been married. They've been married this whole time. And so, yeah, I just feel like that definitely changed a lot for me. It made it to where, um, I don't know, it's just really tough. Gotcha. <laughs> so, you know, growing up still as well, like, I'm like, what high school did you actually go to? I went to Eleanor McMain from 7 through 12th. So how was that for you? Um, Eleanor McMain was very fun. I feel like, um, yeah, it was like a geeky school. But it was also one where I felt secure and where I felt like I could do, like have a lot of fun with friends and it'd be like completely secured. And so I'm thankful that I went to Eleanor McMain because I was able to be smart and be accepted for it and enjoy friends. Gotcha. So graduating from high school, I'm like, what college I'm like, did you actually go to? I went to Xavier University after um, after McMain, and yeah, and there oh, I So took, why did you choose Xavier? So the reason I chose Xavier was because all of my other sisters went. So it wasn't really like a choice for me. Like my mom told me, Xavier is a good spot. Like you know, you'll still be in New Orleans and you'll be able to take up whatever major you want to. And so I knew that I wanted to do mass communications. So as soon as I found out that they had a program, I said, okay, that's, that's where I'm gonna go. But my other sisters went and so did my mom. I didn't include that. So it was kind of like a natural thing for me to also attend. Right. Now, funny part is I've been knowing you a long time. I didn't even know what you were actually doing. So like when I first saw your news, like, oh, that's what, what she was doing. Right. But I never asked you, what did you do? Right. And I was like, oh, I'm, wait, I'm actually proud of her. I'm like, I didn't even know what she right. did, but that's yeah. dope. Like, so. How was your experience like in Xavier? Like, like starting off, did you go to parties? Like, was it rough? Like, how was it? So as Xavier, I feel like, yeah, I did party a lot, but I also really did my schoolwork too. So I feel like a lot of people would see me out, but they had no idea that like, I really was studying hard and I always knew that I wanted to work in media. So it was just, you know, yeah. So it was what it was. I had a good time, but I also made sure to do my work because I knew that I was going to do something that I really enjoyed and I was hoping that it would be what I do now, so. Gotcha. So graduating Xavier, let's talk about the come up to like where you be at now. Like, how was that process to making it to where you're at on like right now? Definitely. Um, 
So after graduating, okay, so while I was in school, and sometimes you would see me out, I also was interning at a news station. So that's something that you probably didn't know. I was interning at Fox 8, interned at Channel 4. Um, for a little while, like after graduating, I did like public, what was it? It was production assistant work where I would prompt for different people. I would put up graphics at like Channel 8. I was getting paid like $7.25 an hour. So that's why you would see me sometimes because I also like had other jobs. I also worked in public relations. And so, yeah, at that time, I just knew that I had a dream. And I'm like, even if I have like three jobs, I'm going to do it. And even though I'm getting paid $7.25 at this news station, I'm just going to like make money in other ways that are all respectable ways so that I can get to where I want to be. So at some point, I'm like, okay, they're not going to put me on air here because they feel like I need to have more experience. So that's when I left and I went to Jackson, Mississippi for, um, for two years. And I was my own reporter, cameraman, um, editor. I would have to go out and shoot stories. Then I would come back, I would edit them. Um, and then I would have to present them. And then they're like, Shay, you work really hard you're gonna be an anchor now and so that's when I became a weekend morning anchor and then I will also report still um, editing and shooting my own stories until I found out that there was an opening in New Orleans and that's when I said I'm gonna go back home because yeah I'm coming home <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> being on the news coming back to your city come back to New Orleans was it always one childhood dream of yours to actually be on the news because yes. before you answer that because i know a lot of people kind of camera shy mm -hmm. have you ever um kind of like went through that oh yeah like when i first started i was so nervous i just remember being like like i would have my script in my mind and then like it would just go away. <laughs> I'm like, what am I talking about? What am I? But then I started praying before every live shot. And I would say, God, let me remember. Let my point come across and let who this is supposed to impact, let it impact them. Let it come from the heart. And I still say that prayer every day. You just pray with me? I just pray with you. Yeah. That's facts. <laughs> That's facts. Because you, well, I'm like, with that being said, this is mm -hmm. my question for you, too. Um, what's your advice to someone watching this interview right now? One, I'm like, one young, I'm a little girl thinking about following, I'm like, in your footsteps. Definitely. Um, I would say never give up, you know? Um, I just remember, like, being in college and in high school, having a really strong New Orleans accent to the point where, like, it was like night and day. Like, if you knew me in high school or college, you would be like, Shay is not going to be... A reporter and I remember I had a teacher in college to tell me that my voice was too ethnic my voice was too New Orleans to ever be a news reporter and instead of me like letting that get to me it made me say you know what I'm about to just start reading out loud every day and so when I would come home after school I would just read like a chapter of like a book that I had been reading I would read it every day and I would mimic you know, who I saw, Sally Ann Roberts. I would, you know, mimic reporters and anchors on television. And then before I knew it, I was comfortable with my voice. And I remember her like seeing a newsreel I had put together and she was so shocked, but it's like, you're never supposed to make your students feel like they can't do what they want to do. So that was just like one instance of many instances because it wasn't just that. You know, I've had a lot of people tell me that I can't do this or, you know, oh, you know, you don't really know any reporter. So how would you know how to do this or how would you know how to do that? But it's like if God puts it in your heart, then there's nothing that you can't do. And so that's what I would tell young girls. Like, don't let anybody tell you what you can't do. If you want to do it, just, you know, look it up, figure out what all you need to do in order to make it happen and just work on those goals one by one. And then before you know it, you really surprise yourself because you've got it done, you know? And so, yeah, I definitely just feel like my whole life has been me just kind of proving people wrong. And so that's why you never should tell somebody what they can't do. But in my case, I'm happy that they did because it just kind of made me go stronger and harder at what I do. Gotcha.
So being one beautiful woman on air, how is New Orleans outside life, like off the camera? Like, do you experience like a lot of guys flirting with you? How do you keep it professional as one young black business or a successful woman who's trying to stay focused on, on the bigger goal? Definitely. So first off, when it comes to my stories, I'm not trying to talk to anybody I interview. And that's me. So there's been guys who have like, I've interviewed and they're like, Shay, can you do this? Can you go out with me? I like to keep it separate because I'm very, very passionate about what I do. And that's what I want people to think of when they think about me. Like when I do a story with you, like you are like very high, like you are my focus. And that's how I feel about every single person I interview. And so I never want anything to take away from that. So I'm always, that's what I'm thinking. Like, okay, first is my job. When it comes to my personal life, I have a very small circle of friends and confidants that, um, that I go out with or I have a good time with. I try not to be on the scene too much, but I do like to have fun, but it's definitely gonna be with a very small circle of friends that I trust. That's a big deal to me because I feel like I've worked so hard for what I have that I never wanted to be compromised. And if I can help it, I'm going to make sure that I'm around people who I feel like like have my back fully. And that's so important like in anything you do is to make sure that your circle is a good, solid circle. Gotcha. So how did you actually I mean, choose your stories? How do I choose my stories? Uh, <laughs> so it depends. Like some stories, it's like breaking. So if it's like, you know, this crazy thing happened on Canal Street and it's like, okay, give me that story. But then there's sometimes that it's not like a breaking news story, a breaking situation. And those are the days that I actually get to say, okay, I've been working on this. I've been talking to this person. I would like to do this story. But every story I do is not like, oh, I chose it. Sometimes, you know, my story is chosen for me just because it's a newsroom and everybody's like, you know, it's a collaborative effort. So it might just be like that particular day, this is what's important. So Shay, could you work on that? But for the most part, I do have my own autonomy when it comes to covering the stories that I enjoy. So I always want to ask you this. Okay. Um, you know, most, you know, media, news reporters, anchors, et cetera, usually don't be from like the city where they actually working at. And like you are like New Orleans homegrown. So so like how is that? Cause like if do people be texting you like, man, hey, but I want you to put this on the news for me. Uh, cause because usually you know, you know, the person stays in a whole different city and you right. know, all these friends don't really see them on the news and stuff. So everyone you grew up with, mm -hmm. from grandmother to parents see you on the news. So I like I wanna know like what's your average day like? My average day a lot of people like have story ideas for me. Some of them, I'm like, hold up. Like, I don't know if I can do <laughs> Because it's like, you know, and then I'll talk to them like, okay, so this is what we typically look for. Cause it can't just be about this or about that. Um, but I will say that it really helps being a reporter in my hometown because a lot of times when something happens, like I already know that person or I know a family member of that person. So it's just like, it's really quick for me to like call up like my cousin or, oh, can you get me in contact with this person so that I can reach out and possibly get an interview. Whereas with a lot of other reporters, they're not from here. So they might not necessarily know that person. Also, when it comes to just the culture in general, like I feel like sometimes you know, it's easy for people who are not from here to get it all wrong. I feel like my stories are very um, accurate, but then also like, like it's gonna have our culture in it and it's not gonna be the fake culture. It's not gonna be, um, I'm never gonna sell a New Orleans person out. Like, my my stories are for us. That's why I wanted to be a news reporter. So it's always gonna be true to the New Orleans story. And I'm and I can say on 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 air right here that I can say that I think that your job I'm like really loves you because like I always see you. 
So, like, whatever you're doing, you got to keep doing it. Anyway, I want to say that. Thank you. But also, being from here, do you ever fear, like, you know, one of the, one of those times you have to, I'm like, report one story, it could be, I'm like, too close to home? Yeah. I remember reporting, um... I remember one of my friends was killed. Um, that happened all broad. And I don't know, it was like, I know her. I grew up with her. And it was like this weird feeling, cause it's like the reporter in me is like, I want to get the story, right? So it's like, you want to get the story. You want to tell it the right way. Cause most of the time when I do the stories I do, it's not because I just want to do it. It's because I want it to be done right. And I don't want it to seem like um, our culture is being extorted or, you know, or, you know, somebody just telling it and they don't really care. So that's why a lot of the stories I take are like the stories that I take. So that's the one. Um, but I knew this girl and um, a part of me was like, don't do the story, like give it to somebody else because she was a really good friend of mine. But I took it anyway because I wanted to, like I said, make the story the right kind of story like do it in a good way and um i cried the whole time and i don't even know if like it came out the right way because just reporting it i stuttered a lot because it was just like i really loved her and you know i still think about her to this day her child that she left behind um so yeah so there are certain stories where it's just like wow like should i have just given that to somebody else but then it's like I know that the family really wanted to see me, so I went there, and it, it wasn't right, you do it. right. And you know they felt totally comfortable, like sitting down with me. It wasn't like we're just interviewing. It was like, okay, let's sit down first. Let's talk. Let's pray. And then you know, what do you feel comfortable talking about? Versus like, let me just ask you all of these crazy off the cuff questions. Mm -mm. Like, what do you feel comfortable talking about? Let's do that. And so, um, so I feel like at the end of the day, they wanted me to do it, but for nights, I could not sleep after that. And I still think about that, that story in particular. So like, just me, I don't know. Like, do you like, I'm like, talk to your boss before something like that? Like, tell him like, you know, have this story like, like too close to home. But I feel like the only person can actually do it right is me. Yeah, I definitely talk to um, to people beforehand and they ask me like, Shay, are you, are you comfortable sure? with doing it because we don't want it to affect you too much? I was like, yeah, I'm going to do it. And then after that, you know, I just, yeah, I feel like it, it came out good, but how can it come out good? Like it wasn't, it wasn't I wish situation. it never happened. It right. The situation. Right. So I got this question for you. Also, kind of, kind of pertain to your job, like. How do you feel, like, basically, do you feel like it's very important to have one good, I mean, workspace? Yeah, so... With, with um, supportive, you know, people as well. Right, the... yeah, so I feel like everybody's supportive, you know. Um, when it comes to my job, you know, what I do is for the community. So, when I come in, like, from before I even go into work, like, I'm thinking about, okay, what would be a great story? We would have a lot of impact. So, usually I wake up, like, two hours before or two and a half, three hours before just to kind of figure out what I want to cover. And um, when I get to work, that's all I'm setting up. Like, I'm setting up for my story. So, I just make sure I have a positive energy and... Um, I have positive energy by making sure that I get good sleep and yeah, and that I stay prayed up because a lot happens. And um, just given all of the trauma here in New Orleans, you have to make sure that you're like prayed up at all times. So, in like the new times, you know, back in the day, if the news reporters would only just kind of post on the news. But here in 2024, you kind of got to post on both. You got to post on social media and everything like that. So do you feel like sometimes you like posting on your on your own personal Instagram gets a little too personal in your DMs? Wait, hold up. I mean, like basically people sending you sending you things like I'm not talking about nothing like nasty. Nothing. I'm talking about like basically people 
people coming at you the wrong way sometimes are different. Uh, just, 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 just saying things how they feel, and like sometimes you might not always agree to right. what they're saying in your DMs. Because right. you know, back in the day, like news reporters didn't have to deal with that because no one knew their personal page or personal lives. So it helps because a lot of people will specifically send me messages before it even gets to my news station or before it even becomes news. Like, Shay, this is what's happening. Um, can you come to interview with me about this? So I feel like I get a lot of news tips through my Instagram and social media. And that's important to me. So I feel like social media has, I don't know, like it, it, it makes me better when it comes to my reporting because then I can really like connect with the community. Yeah. Gotcha. So let's break it down. What is an average day like from you waking up all the way until at night? So I wake up maybe around like 6.30 and I'm looking through emails. I'm looking through nola.com i'm looking at other at articles from everywhere because i just want to make sure that i'm up to date and abreast of everything happening as it has happened like when i was sleeping what was going on when i was sleeping and so yeah so i i wake up early i read a lot of emails and then before i know it i yeah i send in pitches which is like different story ideas that i think um, would be impactful and then we come together it's the collaborative effort and it's like okay Shay we think that this would be great for today and so then from there um, I go out on stories I get interviews um, sometimes it just depending on what happens it can be a lot you know because I do cover a lot of violence in the city so yeah, so I have to definitely just make sure I'm mentally prepared on some of the scenes that I go on. But I have a deadline that everything has to be written by because it has to be edited. And then I'm preparing stuff for 4, 5, and 6 p.m. Gotcha. My so, biggest story usually airs at 6. Okay. So today we are here at the Loyalty Club, and I gave you a chain, you know. So I have to ask you the question. Mm -hmm. What does loyalty mean to you? What does loyalty mean to me? It's everything. I'm a Scorpio. So Scorpios, that's all we do, you know? Um, all of my friends have been my friends for a long time. Um, and there's nothing that I wouldn't do for my loved ones. And in that same way, I feel that way about my community. I feel like New Orleans, I'm loyal to because I want to make sure, like every day I go out, my thought is, I'm gonna tell the best story, but not only that, like I don't want it to be slanted. I don't want it to be partial. I want it to be straight down the middle, but not only that, like I wanna make sure that the person who I interview, that they feel like their voice was heard through it. So I try to magnify the voices of people here. And um, it's definitely a passion for me and something that I'm loyal to. Okay. That's a great answer. <laughs> so, where do you see your career going in like three years from now? I don't know. I feel like it'll just get bigger. I feel like um, I can see myself being a talk show host. I can see myself... Um, oh, but a daily talk show host. Yeah, I would love that. I would love that, you know? Um, I don't know if I'll still be here, but I would love to stay. Yeah, but I don't know. I just see a lot of things happening for me, including an organization for young girls. Um, I feel like if I had more mentors when I was younger, then I could have, like, did what I wanted to do early on. And I feel like that's something that we miss is, you know, people actually mentoring people here in New Orleans. I feel like more young boys need mentors, more young girls need mentors. Everybody should have like a little sister that they're bringing around and showing the way to um, professional women because sometimes you just need to know that you can do it by seeing somebody else do it. And so um, I'm definitely gonna be starting an organization soon too. 
for, for young girls. Hey, got you. <laughs> so, last but not least, tell the world, actually, where can they find you on social media and everywhere else? At news underscore bay underscore Shay. Ooh. How about just Shay O'Connor WZSU too on Facebook and um, Shay O'Connor WZSU on Twitter.